in this video, we'll finally complete our journey of beating Angry Birds Epic while only using the starter classes. In this challenge, we try to beat the game with the first five classes we obtain, making us weak and our enemy strong. At the end of episode 2, Wizpig stole King Pig's crown and final egg, and retreated to his own private castle, guarded by five mini-boss pigs. Will we be able to defeat them all, or will the flock face a final defeat? Before you find out, make sure to subscribe. It's free, and helps me out a ton, but without further ado, let's get on with the finale of beating Angry Birds Epic with the starter classes. We start our journey up Hogcat Mountain by fighting a simple Snoutling pig. He drops a large sum of Snoutlings, and I realize that we're super stacked in terms of money. But, on the next battle we fight some Pyromancers and Ice Pigs, and defeat them all relatively easily. Unfortunately, this is where the game gets much, much harder, and we quickly face off against the Inferno Pig, the first shield boss on our way to Wisp Pig. The Inferno Pig is a firestorm attack that almost one-shots all of my birds, alongside a damage boost ability. Matilda gets a clutch stun, giving our birds an extra turn to attack. The Inferno Pig then gives himself an attack boost stats effect, because the blues who can neutralize his effects, preventing him from dealing even more damage than he already does. However, that's when the mini boss decides to release his main attack, and almost kills Matilda in red, even with Matilda's healing shield. In retaliation, we use the blue's chili ability, giving our birds an extra turn to heal and dish out attacks. However, even that's not enough, as in the next turn the Inferno Pig manages to knock out red, leaving the blues and Matilda in a critical condition with barely any health for their name. Luckily for me, the foe is close to dying, which allows the blues to knock out the Inferno Pig, destroying the first section of Wiz Pig's shield. That's when I realize how underprepared I am for Wiz Pig's castle. Sure, we won this battle, but that was on a sliver of health. How do we beat the future mini-bosses with our current stats? To prepare, I buy some potion and pie upgrades, but decide that we need to prepare even more. And thus, as a final resort, we have to locate the magical sword to complete the Mighty Eagle's quest. To get the sword, we have to go through an alternate path in the Eastern Sea. Inside the submarine, we encounter some mariners alongside a bomb. Naturally, I ignore bombs as they are pretty pitiful in the previous castles, but this is the singular exception. When it goes off, it deals 600 damage to the blues, leaving them on less than 50 health and almost killing all my birds. I do not know why they're so powerful here, but I am so happy this is the only time I have to see them in the game. But, with the bomb gone, we can wipe out the rest of the pigs relatively easily, getting us on the path of the mythical sword. We arrive at the old nest bureaus and defeat some simple rogue pigs before arriving at the sword. What pig could be guarding the sword from the mighty eagle himself? It's no pig. It's ourselves? That's right, the boss we have to fight is a mirror version of Red, dubbed the Sword Spirit. He charges up an attack for three turns before dealing a hefty blow, but one enemy shouldn't be too difficult for three birds. Well, that's what I would say if we could use three birds, but in this battle we can only use a Red, which means that this battle is turned into a classic 1v1. As a final addition, potions aren't allowed, as this is a duel of honor. Now, the gameplay is as basic as it could be. Attack with Red, and guard when the Sword Spirit is about to attack us. Unfortunately, we leave the spirit on a microcosm of HP as he deals the finishing hit to me, making me lose the battle. I'm left in a bit of an issue, as crafting a more powerful sword is expensive and I can't switch classes to make this battle easier, you know, the whole challenge thing. But one early game mechanic comes in clutch and gives me an idea. In Starfish Reef, we unlock the ability to enhance items, giving us more damage and health in exchange for Snoutlings. Well, luckily for me, I had a surplus of Snoutlings and thus I retreated to my base to upgrade my item. After spending some coins and resources, I enhanced my Shell Lance, giving me an extra 22 damage per attack. It wasn't much, but it could get the job done. On a second attempt against the Sword Spirit, I employed the same tactic as did in the first attempt, except I dealt like 10 more damage per hit. And luckily for me, that extra 10 damage was enough, and I defeated the Sword Spirit one turn before he killed me, when I was on 19 health. Not even close. We then go up to the podium and Red unlocks the sword from the sheath, completing the quest. Back at the Mighty Eagle's home, we give him the sword with some restraint from Red, and it poofs into nothingness. The Mighty Eagle is satisfied and we unlock the Mighty Eagle's dojo. The dojo is fairly simple. For pink snoutlings and golden coins, we gain class mastery, which increases our damage and health by 2% per level. After using up all of our coins and upgrades, we become broke, 
While on the other hand, we gain a fair amount of mastery for the pirate, cleric, and tricksters. And with our upgrades, we can finally face off against the Tempest Pig, the second shield boss of Wizpig's castle. The Tempest Pig is fairly similar to the Inferno Pig, with the exception of his secondary ability giving him a shock shield, similar to Chuck's ability. Yet again, we employ the Blue's ability to cleanse status effects and slowly deal damage to the boss. At one point, the Tempest Pig almost kills Matilda, leaving her on a fraction of health. However, thanks to Matilda's Cleric Shield and Red's Knight Shield, we can defeat the boss relatively easily, unlocking the second section of Wizpig's Shield, and allowing us to progress to the third wave. The third boss of Wizpig's Magic Shield is the Earthblood Pig. Just like all the others, he charges up an attack for two turns, alongside a positive status effect for their second ability. In this scenario, they give themselves a Healing Shield, but it doesn't mean anything considering the Blues exist. Their main attack is pitiful as well, as it trades off damage for giving our birds a 35% damage reduction. Don't even need to mention why it's an issue, and we can dispose of the Earthblood Pig within the next few turns, destroying the third section of Wizpig's Shield. The next level is Magic Shield 4, and here we face off against the Blizzard Pig. Unlike the previous three bosses, both of his abilities are offensive, but at an expense he can dish out serious damage. His main ability deals a hefty amount of damage to a singular bird, and his Black Ice attack blocks all of our bird's rage abilities for 4 turns. Moments like these really make me wonder why the developers thought the tricksters were balanced, because they just cleanse every single one of our birds, allowing us to use our rage chili. Every once in a while we do have to use red shields on himself to keep him alive, but the blizzard pig just serves as another chore for our flock to go through. After defeating him, we can get rid of the 4th section of Wizpig's shield, giving us only one more shield boss to fight, the Spirit Caller. The Spirit Caller isn't like the other 4 bosses. Although his attack doesn't deal too much damage, his secondary ability takes 3 turns to charge up. After those 3 turns, he spawns in a simple ghost. The Spirit Caller can also revive after 3 turns, which means that taking out all the ghosts are crucial. For that reason, I switch out red for Chuck. And although Chuck deals pitiful damage, he does wipe out all the ghosts passively, which allows all our other birds to focus on the Spirit Caller himself. As a final resort for Wizpig, the boss doesn't serve as a large threat to us, and he can finally crumble his shield, allowing us to reach Wizpig's castle, the final stronghold of the game. Do you see those power levels? If we were to go into battle at our current state, we would get destroyed. And thus, to prepare for this final battle, we'll have to use all of our resources to get as powerful as we can possibly become. Now, if you've been paying attention to my Golden Snowling count, you may have seen how I have 120 of them. For context, that's a lot. Now, Golden Snoutlings are usually used to buy resources or classes, but both options are pretty useless for me. That leaves my only option to be spending all of my coins on the Golden Pig Machine. We unlocked it back at the Sunflower Plains, right after we unlocked Matilda in the first episode. Now, the Golden Pig Machine allows us to trade Golden Snoutlings for items, some of which can be set items. Set items are just weapons and shields that have special status effects, and are incredibly rare. But, with the 120 Golden Coins, we should be guaranteed to get at least a few. After rolling the machine probably 40 times or so, I got a Titan Grip for Red, a Candy Bomb for Bomb, and a Timeless Joy for Matilda. Not the greatest loot, but it was enough to make our birds much, much more powerful, and even the normal items upgraded all of the flock by a ton. Checking my power level, we finally reached a level higher than Wizpig's, and with that, we could finally enter Wizpig's castle, the last fight of the game. We enter Wizpig's castle with Red's Knight, Matilda's Cleric, and the Blue's Tricksters. They're the main combo that's gotten me through the game, due to Red's Knight Shield, Matilda's Healing Shield, and the Blue's Cleansing Effects. Now, the Blues are particularly useful for this battle due to Wizpig's upgraded abilities. Although he only deals 78 damage, Wizpig is powered by his zombie allies. They are righty and lefty respectively, and each dish out a damage reduction effect and a poison effect to my birds. Add on Wizpig's Black Curse effect, which heals allies for the damage they deal, and the Blues suddenly become crucial to balance out the negative status effects they get every turn. The main strategy is to knock out Wizpig, as he's the main threat that can heal the other zombies. Not to mention, Wizpig is the only enemy that doesn't respawn after 3 turns, so it's really the most logical choice. We try and dish out damage with red almost every turn, and prioritize the blues for keeping our birds free of effects. Wizpig does get very close to killing the blues and Matilda throughout the fight due to his zombie master ability, although thanks to the power of potions, we can regen our health within a turn. As the battle rages on, I switch to using the rage ability on Matilda, 
as her healing potential and chili cleansing effects become necessary to keep my birds alive. At the same time, Red and Blue focus all their damage on Whizpick, getting as many hits as they can before he inflicts his negative effects on us. This tactic is one of the best options I have for this battle, and eventually we're able to knock out Whizpick, also instantly killing his zombies. However, that's not all, and Whizpig returns. He uses his most powerful spell on himself, turning Whizpig into Demonic Whizpig. To counter this, Prince Porky joins the battle, but at this time, as an ally to the last stage of the game, it's our team is four versus the strongest enemy in Angry Birds Epic. Demonic Whizpig starts the battle off with almost 9,000 health, and boasts incredible options for attacking and defending. His black magic ability takes three turns to charge up, but deals 1,000 damage to every single ally, resembling the Inferno Pig. Demonic Whiz Pig also carries the Consumed Spirits ability, which eats up all the ghosts on screen to heal 2,000 health per ghost. The real kicker is that Whiz Pig spawns in ghosts every few turns. But yet again, Prince Porky serves as a lucky counter, as his Holy Hand Grenade has the potential to permanently knock out ghosts, which prevents Demonic Whiz Pig from healing. After charging up his Black Storm, Demonic Whizpig unleashes his Wrath, dealing 50% of our allies' HP, even with Matilda's Healing Shield. Unfortunately, we can't focus on healing as we need to take out the ghosts that are on screen. Using Prince Porky's Rage Chili ability, we get rid of them all, preventing Demonic Whizpig from healing and giving us an extra turn to attack. From there, we just keep on dishing out hits until Whizpig is on low HP. Knocking out all of his ghosts, the Blues have the final hit of our turn, and right before Whizpig's about to strike the flock. We go for the offensive, and he's left on 1 HP as he lets out his fury, knocking out Matilda. Without a healer, we're left on a critical state, as we don't have any form of healing. But, Whizpig's on 1 health. How could the Blues get cl so close yet so far? That's when it hits me. His final ability, Demonic, prevents any bird from killing him in battle. Quite literally, he is invincible from all attacks. However, with no options left, I'm left with one final plan. Sure. No bird can kill him, but what about a pig? We use the rage ability on Prince Porky, and we win. With all of our eggs in our grasp, we win the challenge. And with that, we've successfully beaten Angry Birds Epic with only the starter classes. And that'll be all for the video. Thanks for the support because it's taken me a lot of time to record the clips and make the scripts and something else that rhymes and edit everything that I make. Uh, it was really fun and I may make this more content in the future like the star style. I uh, don't really know what series I'll do next, but stay tuned. So make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys later.